Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to our playthrough of Arkham Horror the card game where we're currently playing the Dunwich Legacy campaign. We are on scenario 6 where doom awaits and we are playing it with the lovely Jenny Barnes and the lovely Agnes Baker. They are currently in Dunwich and they're trying to climb their way to the top of Sentinel Hill to deal with a horrific ritual and we're not having much luck because it's very difficult to find your way up sentinel hill there are all sorts of difficulties in the way that we're trying to deal with okay just before we start obviously a couple of things from last turn as usual first of all I shouldn't have turned over the Eerie Glade because we haven't got anybody there. It's just because of the way, you know, we had to select one of the cards and I just turned it over. It doesn't really matter. Somebody's going there this turn anyway. So we did pick it randomly, so it's not a big deal. But that obviously should be the <laughs> that should be flipped and we shouldn't flip it till we actually get there. So that was an error on my part. Apologies for that. Um, what else? Oh, yes. Streetwise is always in play. So, as regards Dissonant Voices, we could have used it. Yeah, it was already in play, so we uh, made an error there. But again, no big thing. And there was something else. I'm sure there was something else I cocked up on. What was it? Can I remember? Uh, if I remember during the course of this playthrough, I'll give you a shout. Okay, right. Um, but there was something. There is something I've forgotten. But never mind. Well, oh, yes, that was it. The searching for Izzy. As I thought, I didn't actually check, but I thought, yes, we've actually got to get to the location in order to uh, use up our two actions. I thought that was the case, but uh, I couldn't be bothered going checking it because we were right at the end of the episode. So I think that is everything. Okay, so this is episode 41, and I think we will be on turn, is it 70? I can't remember. Yes, I think it's turn 70 that we're on. So uh, let's get on with it. And that means the laugh and the chuckle phase. <laughs> And here we are, the laugh and chuckle phase, and it's round 71, of course it is, I have to go and check. So, mythos phase, which means we get, a so, round two, six, that comes down to six. But not for long, because yes, we use scrying, so we know what's coming up. And that is that Jenny is going to, as the lead investigator, is going to take a mythos card. And we get ancient evil so we've got a place of doom on the current agenda this effect can cause the agenda to advance but it's not going to but uh, it's still a bit of a downer so that's going to go to five and we are up to seven doom which is not ideal so we're gonna have to get a move on right oh and uh, after jenny of course it is agnes so she will get a mythos card as well she doesn't want to be left out and she gets the obscuring fog that we knew about. So we're going to attach it to our location. It gets plus two shroud. But that's okay. Because we've got no reason to stay at the base of the hill anyway. Well, I don't think so. So that's now got obscuring fog. So that is it for the mythos phase. So let's move on to the investigation phase. And here we are at the investigation phase. One other thing that I should have mentioned, obviously you've noticed this has changed around a bit. I do this all the time, just in order to try and uh, make it a better arrangement. I'm not so sure about this one, but we'll see how it goes. It just seems a little bit better. Anyway, right. So we've got Jenny. She's at the Slaughtered Woods and it's got a shroud of two. And what we want to do is we want to get these clues. We need four clues, remember, to advance the act so she has got an intellect of three against a shroud of two so we need a minus one or better which isn't bad can we chuck anything at it 
well we could chuck opportunist at it and that would give us what uh, a minus two or better or well that's pretty much it really and I'm wondering whether to, to do... We might keep Opportunist, I think. The other thing we can do is obviously use Streetwise. Now, if we pay two resources, we get plus three intellect for this skill test. We can also spend two resources to get um, plus three agility. But obviously, we don't need agility for this particular test. Because what we're going to do is we are going to try and pick up that clue so that's an investigation i think we will pay two so we're going to give ourselves plus three intellect using streetwise even though we're at the bottom of a hill and what we are going to have then is six intellect so it's going to be six versus two so we need a minus four or better and we get what do we get a minus three so it's a good job a good job we did that we pick up one of the clues that's great we'll put that here so top banana excellent stuff and that was our first action so we'll use the extra action that leo gives us for that for our second action i think we will try and do the same so we're going to spend two the last two resources and once again, what we're going to do is we are going to investigate. So a minus four or better to get this last clue. Come on. And we get a minus three again. Excellent. So we got that final clue. We will take that. So now we just need another two clues. So for our next action, we are going to move. And... Jenny is going to move here to the Eerie Glade. Remember, they are connected. And she's got one action left, so we may as well go for it. We'll try. Now, the oh, mind you, the Eerie Glade has got four shroud. Mm, so it would be three versus four. Is it worth it? I'll tell you what, we won't do that. We will use our final action. And I think we'll just get ourselves an extra resource or should we draw a card we've already got searching for izzy out now i think she has got another weakness but shall we've got quite a few cards we'll risk it for a biscuit we'll actually pick a card so we're going to take a card and she's got oof, so thank thankfully it wasn't a weakness it is um Prepared for the worst, it cost of one, it's an event, it's got an intellect icon and a um, combat icon, search the top nine cards of your deck for a weapon asset and add it to your hand, shuffle your deck, brilliant, yes, because we're going to run out of uh, bullets in the 32 cult soon and we should be able to get her 45 automatics with this, so good stuff, so that's an event, we'll put it down here, great stuff. So those were her four actions. We just need another two clues now. Okay, so that is it for Jenny. Next up, it will be Agnes. And here we are back with Agnes. Right, oh, so what is she going to do? I think the first thing for her to do is actually do a bit more scrying. If you recall, we know that there is a conglomeration of spheres coming up next in the Mythos deck because we scried it last time. So what we're going to do is we're going to burn another of those. And we are going to look at the top three cards that are in this deck. So we have the conglomeration of spheres. We knew all about that. We have the Vortex of Time, which is a hex hazard. Revelation, each investigator at a Sentinel Hill location tests willpower for each investigator who fails takes two damage. That's a bit nasty. Fortunately, all the diverging paths are Dunwich Woods. It's only when we get to the ascending path that it becomes a Sentinel Hill location. So that's not too bad. At where we are at the moment and we've got a thrall Ugh, humanoid monster abomination so two combat two health 
Two to evade. That's not too bad, actually. Spawn. Location with the most clues. Retaliate. It's got retaliate. And malevolence has overtaken their minds, turning them into soulless puppets. <laughs> right. What are we going to do with those? Remember, we can put them back in any order. The conglomeration of spheres is going to go on the bottom. So that's on the bottom. I'm thinking if we get the thrall, it's going to go to Eerie Glade anyway, isn't it? Because it's got a spawn directive. So it doesn't matter who pulls it, it will go to the Eerie Glade because it's got two clues. But we could try... Oh no, because we've got an obscuring fog now. At the Oh, damn it. What we could have done if we didn't have the obscuring fog... We might have tried to get the last diverging path into play, found out how many clues that had, and you never know, it might have had three. So, and we could have ignored that and just picked up the two off here. Hmm. Right. Well, I think we'll have Vortex of Time first, because that won't affect any of us. It'll just whiff, so long as we don't go to the ascending path. The Thrall will come out and... I think Jenny can deal with the thrall. And we'll put conglomeration of spheres again. We'll we'll knock it back a bit. So um yeah, I think Jenny can deal with that thrall. And remember we got what was it? Prepared for the worst down here. So uh, we should be able to get another weapon. So we'll put them back in that order. That's the right order, isn't it? Yeah, we're gonna pick up Vortex of Time, then Thrall, and then Conglomeration of Spheres. So that's her first action. And for her second action, what is she going to do? Well, she's going to move. So she will also move to the Eerie Glade. And she has got a intellect of two, which is rubbish. Oh no, intellect of three. She gets plus one from the key of East, doesn't she? She does have Lucky though. So we could have a go, and we've got unexpected courage. So three, four, five. Five versus four. And if we miss that by two, so let's say that is like seven versus four, isn't it? So if we get a minus three or better, if we get a minus three or a minus two, we can always use lucky, I think. So, and she does have, yeah, she does have the resources. So, minus three or better, and we get a minus three. That's the third time I've picked minus three out, honestly. <laughs> it wasn't caught anywhere. I just went in. Just one of those things. Yeah, so I've got to spend... So, unexpected courage goes. We don't get another card, even though it's successful. And we've got to spend one... For lucky so fast play when you would fail a skill test get plus two to your skill value for that test so the minus three goes down or minus one we were five versus four so that is a success we'll get rid of that and we've got an extra clue that is excellent and but it still means that the thrall when we pull it out is going to go to the eerie glade but hopefully Jenny will be able to pump it full of lead and um, we will be able to pick up that last clue. So was that her three actions? Yes, she did scraying, she moved and she investigated. So that was her third action. And that is it for the investigation phase. So picked up a few clues there and... Uh, Pretty good. I threw some cards at, uh, at each of those investigations, actually, as soon as we got a minus three, three times in a row. So um, that's it for the investigation phase. Next up is the enemy phase. And here we are at the enemy phase. Our favourite type of enemy phase because we haven't got any. So we can skip straight past it and go on to the upkeep phase. Mm -hmm. 
and here we are at the upkeep phase as I've been wanting to do lately I've obviously put the actions back saves a bit of time and first things first we have to unexhaust any cards so we use scrying so we'll put that back there we go and is there anything else we've put all the actions back we've unexhausted the cards so next we've got to start picking cards out so we'll pick a card out for Jenny and she picks up flashlight awesome that will just be brilliant what a time to pull this one out so we've got flashlight and obviously that'll help us knock this shroud down with any luck it cost us two to play but she'll get to, um, she's going to get to uh, resources in a second because she's Jenny Barnes so hopefully we will be able to put this into play yes that is excellent news so we'll put flashlight there yes a nice bit of luck there okay and yeah she gets a resource and an extra resource because she is Jenny Barnes daddy has helped her out once again Okay, so that was Jenny Barnes, and next is Agnes. She gets a card. What does she get? She gets a flashlight. <laughs> yes, get in. So we've got a flashlight for Jenny and for Agnes. In fact, I think that I think Agnes would probably be able to to do it with this. So that's cool. Right, flashlight. Excellent stuff. So pop that there, just the time. In fact, if we can save these, if we can not use the flashlights, that'll be good because I have a feeling that the ascending path is very similar, that we have to get clues again. So if we can save the flashlights for the ascending path, I mean, we should be able to do it anyway because Jenny's got Streetwise and she does have two, um, what is it she does have two resources to power streetwise so we should be we should be doing it anyway and uh yes if she kills the thrall and uses streetwise i think we'll keep the flashlights in reserve and uh, use them when we get to the ascending path so um good cards flashlight but to be honest we don't really need them thinking about it um yes a couple of weapons had probably been better because we're going to run out on the cult but uh yeah they will come in though they will come in later on so uh no moaning no moaning from me and we get a resource so she's back up to four and that is cool and that is it for round 71 so what i'll do is i'll uh pop to the old computer and upload this first turn and then i'll be back shortly with round 72 we're doing okay so all we need is one more clue and we know what is in the mythos deck for next round scrying's cool love scrying and um that'll be top so um yes we are going to get a thrall and we are going to get um, something else that's going to whiff because we'll just check again yeah we're in a dunwich woods location and we need to be in a sentinel hill location for the first card to be a problem so we're going to be all right i think okay i'll go away upload this i shall be back shortly <laughs> And welcome back to round 72 and the laugh and the chuckle phase. Well, we know what's coming. So first of all, we'll get rid of this card that whiffs. So this is for Jenny. She's lead investigator. And that's what it's called, Vortex of Time. It's a hex hazard. Revelation, each investigator at a Sentinel Hill location tests willpower for each investigator who fails takes two damage. Well, we are not at Sentinel Hill locations. We are both at the Eerie Glade and it's a Dunwich Woods location. So that whiffs. What a pity. Next up is Agnes. Now she gets the thrall. So seeing this, Humanoid Monster Abomination 222. And it spawns at the location with most clues, which is currently the Eerie Glade. So it's got no Hunter thing on it. And... As Agnes is already there, I believe that it will actually attach to her, unfortunately. 
Um, but she does have what's a combat at the moment? A combat's three. Hmm. So should we have her just attack it or? Mind you, we may get. Yeah, I think we'll get Jenny to go first. Jenny will drag it across, kill it, and um, or perhaps even evade it. What's the evasion of? Agnes has got an evasion of four because of the key of East bonus she's got at the moment. She might just evade it, you know. Yes, might just evade it. Mind you, what is it? Jenny would find it easier to evade, wouldn't she? Hmm. Have a think about that. Okay, anyway, that is it for the Mythos phase. Next up is the Investigation phase. And here we are at the Investigation phase. Got a plan. Jenny is going to go first. And da, 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 I'll tell you what I forgot to do. Mythos phase. I forgot to put Doom up, didn't I? So we're actually on eight Doom, which means we've only got four left. Right, now I've sorted that out, we'll get on with Jenny and her investigation phase. So for her first action, she's going to use Leo's action. And I think she's going to try and get this clue first. So uh, that's an investigation. She's got three, but she's going to spend two of these for Streetwise. Which is going to give us six. That will be six versus four. So six versus four. We need a minus two or better. Can we use anything else? We could throw a flashlight at it. But I don't particularly want to throw that at it. I just want to make sure. That's all. So let's put Opportunist in. For the wild card, we probably won't beat it by plus three, so we'll get rid of the card. But let's use opportunist, the skill card. So if we beat it by three or more, we'll get that back. But I'm not expecting to get it back, to be honest. So that'll be seven versus four. So we need a minus three or better. So a minus three will do, again. <laughs> and we get what? a zero. And that's three that is three that's three better so a zero means we actually keep opportunist brilliant i think it does yes because we were seven versus four weren't we four's the shroud so um yep we beat it by three so we return opportunist to our hand brilliant and what's more we get this final clue so now we've got four clues, we've got to spend them immediately, I think. I checked the act before. Let's have a look. Pat of the Hill. Objective, when the investigators have collected the requisite number of clues, they must immediately spend them in advance. So we're going to spend them. And we will advance the act. Let's have a read. A sacrifice made, Act 1B. During your search through the wooded paths around the base of Sentinel Hill, you came across a startling sight. A herd of sheep lays dead upon the ground in a, sec in a secluded clearing, their bloodied carcasses placed in a strange but careful pattern. Holding your nose against the stench of death, you step over the mangled sheep on your way to the centre of the odd formation. In the centre of the sheep lies the corpse of a man, a clear jewel has been pr firmly pressed into his forehead, caving in the front of his skull. His eyes are wide, his face contorted in a vision of fear, as if beseeching you for mercy. Though you know better, you check for a pulse. As you touch the man's skin, the jewel in his forehead dissolves, and the woods around you seem to clear. The arcane presence masking the path further up the hill has faded. Reveal ascending path. Remove all clues from each location in play while well, we've got none left. So get rid of that. Now that says reveal ascending path. I'm not sure we flick it over. But I think we can get up there. So we'll put a path up there. Direct from the base of the hill. 
Uh, I'm sure, and what we'll do is that direct path also counts for these, I think. So I think all Slaughtered Woods, Eerie Glade, and whatever this diverging path was, they all lead up there. You can tell it's got all the symbols there on the bottom of it. So it just means we can just get straight there. So it'll just save me putting about a million like of these white pathways up to it. Right, Ascending the Hill, version 3. If you remember, we had to pick this one because of what we've done previously. Act 2A, Ascending the Hill, version 3. As you ascend the hill, the environment around you grows increasingly strange and otherworldly. The arcane energy feels even stronger here, crackling in the air and crawling on your skin. Clues cannot be placed on non-altered locations, so we can't put them on anything that isn't an altered location. Objective, when an investigator enters Sentinel Peak, advance, so we don't pick up clues, so then flashlights are probably useless, but uh, we'll see what's on the altered, what is it, the ascending path card. Right, okay, so, top banana. We'll pop that back there. Now, what is she gonna do for her second action? So we can't use think on you. We could have used think on your feet, by the way. That was when an enemy spawns at your location, but we didn't want to move anywhere. We wanted to stay, so that's why I didn't play think on your feet. But elusive, I think we may be. Oh no, we can't play it because we've. Oh, we might be able to play it. Fast play only during your turn. Disengage from an enemy engaged with you and move to a revealed location with no enemies. But it had cost us to get the two required to play it. Oh yes, we can. So we're gonna spend an action to, oh no, it has to be engaged with you. Urgh. Oh no, that's fine, because it's fast. Right, I think this is right. Okay, yes. So we're gonna spend one of these actions to Gain a resource. We're going to spend another of these to gain a resource. So we now have two resources. Important. Because for our last action, we are going to engage the thrall. So we've engaged the thrall over to us. And now because it's engaged with us, we can pay these two resources. And as a fast action, we can use elusive because it's fast. Doesn't take an action. Play only during our turn. It's still our turn. Disengage from each enemy engaged with you and move to a revealed location with no enemies. And guess where we're going to go? So we'll get rid of that. And yes, we are going to go to the ascending path, which is connected now. So we can have a look at it. Ascending path. Location Dunwich Sentinel Hill. The path leading further up the hill is masked. You cannot move into ascending path, but we can now. Ha <laughs> ha. So we flick it over because we've got there. And it's got a shroud of three, but it's got no clues. Location Dunwich Sentinel Hill still. Ascending path is connected to each copy of altered path. One, you for an action you can investigate if you succeed instead of discovering clues put a random set aside altered path into play limit once per round great so we can still use the what is it the flashlight so that's good let's move these along so that is excellent now thrall i think because did we i don't think we evaded it so I don't think it becomes exhausted, but I also don't think that it automatically moves across to Agnes. Yeah, I just think that um, it has to wait to the enemy phase now to reattach. I hope so, because otherwise it balls this up. But um, so there we are. We've got the thrall back at the Eerie Glade and jenny has moved up there to the ascending path and that was her last action so first action what she did was she investigated 
she was opportunist, got opportunist back because she um, succeeded by three or more, got that final clue. Then we immediately had to advance the act. Sending path came into play. And then what we did was we spent two of our actions to get two resources. Then we played elusive, but that was fast. Um, oh no, then, so we had one action left. Then we engaged the monster and then we played elusive because it's fast and we paid those two resources. Yes, that, that's four in total. And that is the end of her go. So next up, it is Agnes. Hello, I'm back. Obviously, just sorted some things out of there. Noticed a little error I'd made. In fact, these are not connected to the ascending path. Not connected at all. So in order to get to the ascending path, we've got to go via the base of the hill. Which seems a bit weird. So actually let's have a look. Push that too far back, I'm gonna. It does say, what was it? Reveal ascending path. Yeah, so we must have to go to the base of the hill and then back up again because there isn't a connection from say Eerie Glade or the slaughtered woods to the ascending path, so made a little bit of an error again there because I've revealed ascending path again, am I? But we're going to get somebody there now because that's where Agnes is going. So no big deal, just did it a little earlier than I should have done. So Agnes, first thing she's going to do is she is going to move. Do, 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 do. She's going to go up there. I think that's fine because the thrall is not engaged with her. So um, I think when uh, Jenny played uh, Elusive, I think the thrall is just unengaged. Yeah, it might even be exhausted. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. And But it, I don't think it automatically flicks across to the other investigator until the enemy phase. So because it is not actually attached to anybody we can move Agnes, so she's used an action to move back to the base of the hill. Then she's going to use her second action, and she's going to move again, and she is going to go to the ascending hill. Sorry, the ascending path up the hill. So everything we just did on Jenny's turn, just pretend I did it just then. And we've got those three altered paths that we're going to pick from. Now, she's got a shroud of three and we can investigate for an action but i think rather than investigate what we're going to do is we are just going to spend two of our resources and we are going to put flashlight into play which has three supplies we are sort of playing a bit fast and loose now because what's going to happen is we are going to get the conglomeration of spheres, unfortunately. But it's going to come down at the base of the hill where it's going to attach to Jenny. And I think we can use Think on Your Feet, can't we? Play when an enemy would spawn at your location. Now, it is a hunter though, so I might ignore that. I might not use that, but it is a possibility of using Think On Your Feet. Or I can just try and kill it with the point, point 0.32 Colt. Or we can give it the runaround a bit, but um, we'll see how we go on. I'll probably have to kill it, but um, I really do want to get the flashlight into play. And uh, if we can do that, then uh, we can start looking for getting these altered paths into play and that'll be very very useful indeed all right i think that is it because yes that was her last action to put flashlight in play oh should have uh, you know what no we're not going to put flashlight in play i'm taught myself in chatting to you guys, I've talked myself out of it. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll use our final scrying, I think. So let's give her those two back. She hasn't spent those. She's thought better of it. She's put the flashlight back into her backpack. And she sat down to do a quick bit of scrying. So this is the final one. So 
we won't be exhausting it, we'll be chucking it after this. Um, exhaust scrying and spend one charge. Look at the top three cards of any investigator's deck or the encounter deck. We're going to look at the encounter deck again. Actually, it doesn't tell you to discard it, but we can't use it because obviously it's got no charges left. But we'll keep it in our hand because it doesn't tell us to discard it. Okay, so top three cards. We know what the first one is. Yay, it's the Conglomeration of Spheres. Seen it many times. We've got the Light of a Forgomon. Pact Power, Peril, Revelation. You must attach Light of a Forgomon to either the current agenda or the current act. Limit one per agenda act. Treat all damage as direct damage and all horror direct horror. That's horrendous. That is especially horrendous for Agnes because it means she's got to take it directly you know, any sanity loss, so we can't even give it to Peter or put it on the key of East. That is a bad card. We are on eight as far as the um, agenda goes, so that could still be four, and it could still be a while on Ascending. Oh, that is horrendous. Yeah, that is a bad card. And an Avian Thrall, and this is bad. Look at that, five combat. Four health, three to evade, creature monster abomination, prey lowest intellect, which currently is Agnes or Jenny, because they're both on three at the moment. Hunter, while Avian Thrall is being attacked using a range or firearm or spell asset, it gets minus three fight. That's good. We do have 32 Colt. That's good. Okay. Um... The conglomeration of spheres is still a pain. We'll put that on the bottom. Or should we put the... No. Can't afford to have two monsters out. So we'll have the avian for all coming out first. Which means it will attach to Jenny. And she is in the obscuring fog, isn't she? Down here at the base of the hill. So she can deal with it there. And... Light of Four Gomans, just a menace that'll stay in play. And Conglomeration will be coming out the turn after that. I don't think we'll be able to stop it because we've run out of scrying. So, ooh. Bad. Bad. But, you know, all of those were coming out anyway. So, um... It's not like we've lost out. We were going to have to deal with all of those cards at some point or other. So, oh, that's bad. Eee, that's bad, 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 bad. But, yes, at least we got to see it. And um, we can have a think for next time to see if we can do anything about it. But at least we've got up to the ascending path. Okay, so that is it for the investigation phase. Next up, it is the enemy phase. Well, another nice and quick enemy phase upcoming. We only have the one enemy, the Thrall, but it isn't a hunter, so it is just going to stay there in the eerie glade, so what a pity. Okay, so having done the enemy phase, next up is the upkeep phase. And here we are at the upkeep phase. All got our actions back and we'll unexhaust scrying even though we can't use it anymore because we do not have we do not have any charges left on it. Um ba -ba 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 -ba, right, there is nothing else to do as regards that sort of stuff. So it's straight to pulling cards. So we pull a card for Jenny. And Jenny gets backstab. Cost of three, an event, it's got a combat icon, agility icon, backstab, tactic, fight. This attack uses agility instead of combat. This attack deals plus two damage. That could be useful against that avian thrall. So we'll put that down there. Unfortunately, we do not have three, <laughs> three resources. We will have two, though. She gets one for upkeep and one because she's Jenny Barnes. 
you could do with a lot more because uh, if we want to get the 45s out obviously the amount you pay for the 45s means the amount of bullets that you get with it so she could do with a lot more we could do with another emergency aid coming uh, sorry emergency cash coming out right that's her Agnes she gets a card as well she gets unexpected courage always useful so put that down here that could be useful for picking up clues as well so that is good and yeah we've got a sort of that four goldman if we can get flashlight up with unexpected courage and yes rattle through picking up if the altered paths are like the divergent paths i can't remember but i think they probably are we've probably got to get clues um, we might be able to rattle through it and get to the peak. That light of a four goal on though is a menace. Okay, so we've done that apart from. She gets a resource as well, so she's up to five. Good O. Right, so that is it for round 72. And that is it for episode 41 of Arkham Horror the Card Game and the Dunwich Legacy Campaign, where we are playing Where Doom Awaits, which is scenario six. Hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching. Thank you for all the views. Thank you for all the subscriptions and for all the likes and the dislikes. At least you're watching as ever. If I've made any mistakes, please let me know. There were a few things I did there that I'm not too sure about and I may get collared on them. Um, if, that is, if that's what it is, then just let me know and I'll try and fix them if I can. I think I did it right, but I probably haven't. Um, other than that, um, yes, any mistakes, please let me know. I'll try and fix them. Uh, anyone who's been across to Board Game Links to upvote the site over there, thank you so much. And uh, anybody at BGG who's liked the video threads there, made a comment, liked them, or, you know, drop geek goal, anything like that, thank you so much. You are so kind. Thanks for all the help and support. And I hope to see you next time for episode 42 of Arkham Horror the Card Game and the Dunwich Legacy. I'll try and do it in a couple of days. I'm off shift at the moment moment so i may be able to get another round in of this i've got some time so uh, you may see episode 42 a bit quicker than episodes have been turning up lately and don't forget i'm also doing a video game playthrough of pathfinder kingmaker and the misadventures of sir basil bodkin if any of you are interested in that but if you're not that's fine you don't have to Okay, thank you for watching, and uh, I hope to see you next time. Until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo!